We're gonna have a little fun today playing with dates and time with JavaScript and PHP. Um, we're gonna start with JavaScript. You can see I'm in uh, Dreamweaver CS5.5. And to start writing uh, JavaScript, we're gonna go right in the header. And we're gonna write our script tag. And our end script tag. And the first thing we're gonna do is to create a time object. We're gonna first create a variable and we'll just call it now. And we're going to set that to a new date object. So now that we have that date object, we can uh, print it. We're going to do that with the document right. Document dot write. Then we'll try. We'll just print now. All right. We'll save that. Let's see what we get. Cool. So you can. It's, it's printing today's date. Um, it's showing even in our you know, it's Eastern Standard Time. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing in PHP. So let's actually we'll save this as a PHP file instead of an HTML file. All right, and we're going to write our PHP. P. Now. PHP does it a little bit different um, using the date time class. So what we have to do in PHP is create another variable. We can call this now since it's we're not going to get a duplicate error since we're using a different scripting language. Now equals new date time. Now unlike uh, JavaScript, we can't just write the date time. We actually have to format it before uh, we can echo it. So uh, let's do an echo, and then we'll do a date time, a date format method on our now variable, and we're going to put it in the format year, month, day, and we'll also include the time. all the way to the seconds. Perfect. So now we're echoing the formatted version of our date time variable now. So let's give it a try. Since we changed to a PHP extension, I'm going to change it up here to the PHP file. And you can see we actually are echoing the time in PHP. And I'm able to do this because I am using a uh, WAMP server. So we uh, Windows Apache MySQL PHP. So I do have a PHP SQL uh, server running on my local host. That's why I'm able to run the, the PHP code we have here. But it's kind of uh, all bunched together, so it's a little hard to read. So I'm going to put a couple of breakpoints in there. So in the body, I'm going to put a couple of HTML breaks so it's a little easier to read. Refresh. There we go. So this is using the JavaScript uh, date object. This is using the PHP date class. All right, now let's clean up our JavaScript date variable a little bit. Uh, instead of just printing the now variable, we're actually going uh, to do a date dot to local date string. You can see I can just press enter because Dreamweaver has already located the method for me. Press enter. We'll save that and we'll give that a try. There you can see it cleaned up our date a little bit. Cool. And we can also obviously take the time off the PHP if we wanted to. Time is not important for our program. We can delete that right out of the format and save it. Try it again. Let's see. We, there we have it. Let's try to play around with a fun little timer here quick. So all I have to do to instantiate that is go to set time out. You can see it turned green, so it's actually using a uh, method out of the JavaScript library. Now I'm going to call my own function. And we'll just call it time is up. So it's the first parameter you can see is the code, and then the second parameter, as you can see as it highlights, is the delay. We're going to do a delay of five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. So I have this set timeout function calling my time is up function. Forgot my 
parentheses there. Um, but I need to create that first. So I'll create function time is up. And all we're going to put in here is a little alert. Say time is, oops, quotes, time is up. Alright, so if you run this in five seconds, um, we'll make it three seconds. So you have to watch me wait for the whole time. Now we should get a little pop up saying time is up, game over. So we saved it, let's give it a try. Original code's still going to be there, of course, we didn't clear that out. There we go, there we have it. We have a little pop up alert saying time is up, game over. So that's quite easy using the set timeout method. Um, we can get a little more creative than that. So instead of using uh, this, let's actually um, have a timer that will actually tell us how many seconds we've been on the website. Um, to do this first, we'll go into the body and we'll create a div. So div, and we'll get pretty creative. So we'll say uh, the div style background color so st1 background color we're going to have it be yellow so I can just select my yellow here there we go and we'll have it, the width be 400 pixels that should work and that div and within that div we're going to put an input box so create a form and form and then an input box so input type text and then we'll have the ID equals uh, count and then we'll have this form be disabled and we'll also get creative with this. We'll have the style. We have it so there's no border. There we go. Border equals none. And background color is going to be transparent. Perfect. So usually we use the style sheet for something like this, um, but we're just playing around. So we have our input box, the ID of count. So that's where we're actually going to store the number that's counting. It's all within a div with the background color of yellow. Now let's create our script. Um, we'll scrap the code we have currently. We don't need that. And what we're going to do is create a new function. And so we'll have a function called start time timer and this is what we're gonna have a button we have a uh, call so we have a start timer function that's gonna call the function time count now we'll make that function so we'll create a variable c equals zero it's gonna be our count uh, variable t. You'll see why we're creating that in a second. And then we'll create our function timed count. Um, so now we're going to uh, grab that element we have down here uh, by using a document dot get element by ID, and the ID is of course count, and then we say the value equals C, so the initial value is obviously going to be zero since we declared that up top there, and then we're also going to have C equals C plus one, that's how we're going to continue to count by one second. So we'll have to get our timer going. So we'll say t equals set timeout, same method we used earlier. 
say time count is the method it's going to call. And we're going to say every second. All right. So let's create our button outside of the div. So input type button uh, value equals start count. And we're going to use the on click event to call our method, JavaScript method. We're going to see, and you can see it's up here. Start timer. So we're going to call that right here. And then we should be all set. We'll save and give it a try. So let's do a little refresh. Click our start count button. And there we have it. We have a counter. 